Hi, welcome back to discussion section number four and five for introduction to linguistics. Today I'm going to wrap up the course materials you learned in week three. Um, this week we had only one lecture. Um, I hope you guys did a great job in a um, quiz one. Um, so because we had only one lecture, there are not many things to cover this week. Um, it's mostly about syllables. Um, and I'm going to go through what syllable is and how to analyze a structure within it. So a syllable is a rhythm unit and as a English speaker you automatically know how many syllables there are in a in a word so it's a certain way to divide up a pronunciation of a word um, into um, into the uh, rhythm um, that it has. For example, if you um, say a, a multisyllabic word, something like syllabification, how many syllables are there in this word? You'd know that there is syllabification. So there are six syllables within, within this um, word. Um, English words can have one syllable, two syllables, um, many syllables. Um, but at, le at least it had needs um, one syllable. Um, and each syllable has um, its own structure within it. So this is the syllable structure you can see. Um, I wrote rhyme here, but the correct pr um, spelling should be R-I-N-E. So let's think of a word like sing. Uh, if you transcribe the um, pronunciation of this word, it will be um, three segments, s, e, and ng. It has three sounds within this word. Starting sound is s, um, and the second, the media sound is e, and the sound that ends this word is ng. And the consonant or a group of consonants that begins a word is called onset, while the consonant or group of consonants that ends this word is called coda. And whatever um, the that is not onset or coda is called nucleus. And in English, there are words without an onset or without a coda. For example, um, if I say a word like eight, or it's same pronunciation, um, but different word eight. Um, the pronunciation, if you transcribe this word, it should be this or either this uh, based on your dialect. Um, as you can see, there is no consonant at the beginning. Um, so th this is a word without an onset. Um, think of a word like sky. It has two consonants in the beginning. Um, so it has a group of two consonants. It's a consonant cluster that comes as, that serve as an onset in this word. But you can see that there is no um, consonant at the end of this word. So there is no coda. So this is a coda list syllable, sky. Um, nucleus is, a, on the other hand, is necessary to a syllable. There is no syllable that has no nucleus. Every syllable must have a nucleus. A nucleus can be either vowel or a syllabic consonant. As you learned in the previous lectures, um, there are four different syllable, syllabic consonants in English. R, M, N, L. And you have this small vertical line as a diacritic to denote a syllabic consonant. Um, words like um, button or um, kitten or rhythm, those words have a syllabic consonant at the end. Um, or nucleus, a vowel can serve as a nucleus too. A vowel can be either monophthong or a diphthong. Um, Vowels like ah or e or u, uh, these vowels are monophthongs. Diphthongs are vowels um, like 
vowels like I or um, A, O. These are the um, diphthongs um, that can serve as a nucleus. And um, the component that consists of nucleus and coda is called rhyme. So when you have onset, nucleus, and coda, you have to remember that nucleus and coda are grouped together to form a rhyme. You do not group onset and nucleus first. This is a wrong way to draw a syllabification um, syllable structure tree. You first project the, this rhyme using nucleus and coda. And then this onset and rhyme are two parts that, um, that consist a syllable. Syllable is often denoted by a uh, Greek letter sigma. So um, each syllable has an onset and a rhyme, and rhyme is a, made of a nucleus and coda. And note that an onset and a coda is a optional part. So if you don't have an onset, um, it will look like cool. Um, if you don't have an onset, it will look like this because there is no onset. If you don't have a coda, it will look like onset and rhyme and a nucleus right below because there is no coda. If you lack both onset and coda, the syllable structure will look like this. You should still draw a rhyme because syllable is not just made of a nucleus. It is made of a rhyme that consists of a nucleus in this case. So there are many different structures of a syllable. And we also learned about sonority hierarchy. So sonority is about how much airflow um, comes out through your oral or nasal cavity when you're pronouncing a specific sound, specific segment. Um, as you can um, easily uh, predict, vowel is, a, is always have higher sonority than any other consonants because uh, when you pronounce vowels like ah, o, you can see there is no obstacle within your oral cavity or nasal cavity. 100% um, of air comes out uh, from lung very easily. Um, on the contrary, um, stops like pa, ta, ka, you can always feel these obstacles um, that blocks the airflow coming out from a lung. And there is this hierarchy that starts from vowel and goes through nasal, proximate, fricative, and stop. And the proximate is either um, liquid or glide. Um, and important concept is a relative sonority that more sonorous consonants must be closer to the nucleus than less sonorous consonants in both onsets and coda position. So when you think of a word like smart, ah is a nucleus. And more consonants, uh, more sonorous consonants should, should be closer to the nucleus. So the sonority of a whole word um, starts with a less sonorous consonant, moves towards um, higher um, sonority consonants, and then peaks at the vowel, and then it goes down again by more sonorous consonant and less sonorous consonants, like this. So, for example, um, smart, S, is a fricative. It is rank number four here. M is a nasal, is rank number two. 
Ah is a vowel, rank number one. And R, smart, um, is a liquid. It's a rotic liquid, so it's an approximate. It's number three here. T, it's a stop. It's number five. So you can see um, number four sonorous segment, which is a vowel, um, serve as a nucleus. And then uh, more sonorous consonants, nasal, which is more sonorous than a fricative, stay closer to a nucleus. And also approximate stays closer to a nucleus than a stop. So this is why a word like muster cannot exist because S should go further from the nucleus A and stop should go far away to the end um, from the nucleus. So that's, this is why certain syllable can exist in the English language and certain syllables cannot. And this is a key algorithm to uh, syllabify a word. It means you divide a word into a, a certain syllables and each syllable has its, um, within, uh, its, its own structure within um, a syllable. So you first start with recognizing the nucleus um, and then you project the onsets. So you don't do codas first. You first find the nucleus and then start um, propagating to the left to recognize what onset the syllable has. And there's a rule called maximize onset rule that you have to have the maximal number of onset, not the coda. And then you um, connect all the leftover consonants as a con codas, con codas, and then you group nucleus and coda into a rhyme. And then you group onset and rhyme into a syllable. Okay, let's do some examples. These are the examples um, posted by our other TA, Noah. Um, I'm going to go through uh, all these examples and how to syllabify these words. So if, um, first three words are very um, close to each other. At, ant, and ants. So the first syllable, at, oops, consists of two consonants, uh, sorry, two segments, one vowel and one consonant. So um, only vowels and syllabic consonants can serve as a nucleus. So um, the a part will be the nucleus. And let's see where we can find onset. Do we have onsets? No. So there is no onsets in this example. Um, and then we recognize codas. All the consonants that are not onsets are codas. So T should be coda. And then you group nu nucleus and coda into rhyme. And th since there's no onset, um, this is directly connected to the higher note, the highest note syllable. This is the answer for the first problem, at. Let's see um, how we can do second problem, ant. There are three sounds. First vowel, a should be the same nucleus. And as you can see, there is no onset. All the other parts should serve as a coda. But this time, we have two consonants, N and T. So you have to branch it. Branch um, from coda note to two consonants, N and T. And the next step, you um, group the nucleus and coda part together to uh, make rhyme. And again, there's no onset. This is syllable. This is the answer to the second question. 
Third problem, ends. Again, we have four segments. There's no onset. Um, this should be nucleus, and these all three constants are part of a coda. So it looks like this. And then nucleus and coda join together to form a rhyme and then connect it to a syllable. Hope you understand. And word like cats, number four. You will um, figure it out that there is an onset and coda in this syllable. So you first find a nucleus and then get the onset and all the other consonants should serve as a coda. And you join nucleus and coda to form rhyme and then rhyme and onset to form a syllable. So this is the correct answer. Instruct, instruct, in struct. Okay, so there is no syllabic consonant here. There is one vowel over here, and there is another vowel over here. So these two vowels can act, can serve as a nucleus. And let's see how many onsets we can ha have. Can this nucleus have an onset? There is no new um, onset in the at the beginning, so there is no um, onset here. However, for this nucleus, you can find a few onsets, con a few consonants that can serve as an onset. First, let's see R. Um, can rocked. Um, can R be an onset um, consonant? Yeah, why not? Like, R can serve as an um, onset in many syllables, like run, ran, um, rake, blah, blah, blah. What about T and R? Can these two consonants serve as an onset? Yes, like truck or train or tree. This is fairly normal consonant groups um, group in English to form an onset. What about struck? Um, there are many words start with str, stray, street. So these three consonants again can make an onset consonant cluster. What about n? Can n instruct uh, form an English word? No. Um, as you can see, nasal um, has a higher sonority than a fricative. So. Um, it's impossible to have um, nasal um, further from the nucleus we have to form a consonant group um, as an onset. So only these three, S, T, R, can form as an onset. So basically all the other consonants should serve as a coda. This should be a coda. And you join nucleus and coda to make it rhyme. And then onset and rhyme to form a syllable. There's no onset here, so this art this rhyme can solely make up a syllable. So in conclusion, there are two syllables. One is in, the other is struct. In the second syllable, there is an onset of three consonants and coda of two consonants. In struct. And the nucleus is the vowel, menafthang a. Okay, let's move on to the second, uh, number six, is instructor. Um, in this question, there is one more segment at the end. And as you learn in the 
um, beginning, um, a syllabic consonant can also serve as a nucleus. So there are three nucleus in this problem. You can compare this to the number five you, we just so solved. And um, these three consonants can serve as an onset. And since we have another nucleus here, you can form another onset in front of it, which is T. Because you cannot make K and T to make a cluster to serve as an onset. There's, um, there's no English word that starts with K and T. Kata is impossible consonant group. They're both stops. So all the other consonants should serve as a coda, like this. And nucleus and coda join up to make a rhyme. And there's no coda over here, so this is rhyme. And then onset and rhyme, onset and rhyme, onset and rhyme to form a syllable. So there are three syllables in structur. So in the number five, structur was a syllable, but as you as we have one additional um, syllabic consonant at the end in the, in number six because of the suffix or in structur, um, it is resyllabified. The KT consonant group is now broken into two parts. Um, so the second syllable only have K as a coda, and T sound is now acting, um, it's playing a role of an onset of the last syllable. Um, number seven, um, word judge. We have three sounds, um, affricate, vowel, and an affricate. You have to be careful that an affricate, although it looks like it, is consist, it consists of two parts, actually, affricate is a single sound. So you do not break up de and je, because an affricate is a single sound, ja. So the first consonant will be onset, the vowel will be nucleus, and then the third part, the last consonant, should be a coda. And the nucleus and coda form a rhyme, and onset and rhyme to form a syllable. Make sure that there is a single line over here. You do not break up the and ja. It is different from this TS over here. TS is not an affricate in English. It is two sounds, T and S. So this should be break, um, broken up into two parts, while affricates like CHA or JA should serve should be recognized as a, uh, should be considered as a single consonant, not a consonant group. This is very important. The last question, word bait. B, A, T. A are not two nucleus. It's a um, diphthong. Diphthong should be considered as a single nucleus, not two nucleus. So um, make sure that these two components are branched out from a node called nucleus, and the nucleus and coda to form a rhyme, and the um, beginning consonant forms an onset, onset and rhyme to form a syllable. So do not make a mistake like splitting up into two nucleus. This is wrong. This is correct. 
Okay, um, this is the end of the discussion section this week. Um, the pop quiz, which has the highest, um, sorry, which is the high sonority um, among these, nasal, approximate, um, fricative, and stop. Um, please um, answer to this pop quiz. I want to keep track of who's watching this video. If only a few number of students watch this video, I'm not going to um, keep making it. Um, I want to see how many students um, are being involved in this discussion. So um, thank you very much. Have a good day.